URL back to the big crowds? Are they coming to Houston? Are they coming to Atlanta? Do we even want to see the big crowds return to battle rap? Let's talk about it. Yo, what up, man? Chris Obias checking in back with another blog. Salute to all the subscribers, man. Thanks for everybody that, you know, rock with the movement and everything. Sue Sir Battle Record is coming soon. I'm still maybe about 10 days away from it, man. I might drop it on like the first of the month or something. Somewhere around there. I'm still going through the... It's going to be a long blog, bro. That Sue Sir Battle Record is going to be a long blog. After that, I'm doing Calico, Hollow. It's a lot of... A lot of names I'm thinking about that got some interesting battles that I definitely want to talk about, man. Um... What else we got going on? We got all, obviously Ultimate Madness is tonight. You know what I'm saying? We got Cortez, Casey J, Geechee Gotti, and we got Rum Nitty, man. So salute to that, man. But we're going to talk about these crowds in battle rap. I feel like right now we're getting a good mixture of everything in battle rap. You know, we got the caffeine era, which is kind of small rooms, pretty much face to face, maybe a little bit of crowd, but you can hear every single bar. You still got. Bullpen event just had John John and Ace Hameen, big crowd. Max out just had Cassie and Hitman, big crowd. You kind of getting a little bit of both. So where does Chris Umbias stand on all this? I'm going to be honest, man. I kind of miss the big crowds personally, man. The caffeine era is cool. I'm not knocking it. I understand why URL is doing it, um, whether you agree with it or not. But at the end of the day, I still, the element of the big room is still still kind of dope to me. Like, it's still... Do you believe? It's cool to see dudes choke, have to deal with the hecklers from the crowd, then have to get the bar back. It's cool to see entourages. Man, I still to this day be thinking about, like, Fendi and... And, and uh, Jada Kiss and how they reacted to good. Come on, I learned that from my uncle. He was an old school player that had Dan San Antonio back in the day. Bruce Bowen. Like, all that stuff plays into a battle, in my personal opinion, man. You know what I'm saying? The jazz face, all these famous faces that we, that we are, that are, are, um... <laughs> That signals a lot of what we see in battle rap. I kind of miss that. You know what I'm saying? I think that that's actually dope. There are corny moments. Definitely corny moments, man. Booing is corny in my opinion. Chanting 3-0 in the second round when the third round hasn't even went. We do hear that a lot or, or have heard that. That's also whack to me. But all of that is what makes you great. Is being able to deal with all that and still rise to the occasion. And that's why the top tiers are who they are. And that's why we put them on that pedestal. Um, I've been watching a lot of interviews, man. You know what I'm saying? And I think Smack is starting to be ass. What's up with the big room? And he keeps giving an answer. <laughs> but he's not being honest. You know what I'm saying? I got to keep it real with you. He's not being honest. Hold up. Before I even get into that, a lot of y'all may not know that Caffeine was started by like an Australian businessman or some Australian entrepreneur. He started Caffeine and then from there they got this big investment from, from Fox. You know, Fox TV, Fox Sports, all that kind of stuff. Got this big investment in Fox, like $100 million or something like that. And, um, you know, from there it became like a partnership. And then obviously they signed on with Drake and Drake became is really like a front man for the whole company. It's not like he owns caffeine or anything, but he becomes like a front man for, for uh, caffeine and, and bringing in battle rap into the caffeine thing. So with Fox being a big part of that, they become a shareholder. Obviously, there's a lot of political, um, you know, ties into this whole thing. Shareholder ties. They make a lot of decisions, man. So Fox isn't finna let. URL have these battles in the middle of COVID. Even though people are taking a vaccine, even though COVID is, people are almost like F COVID at this point. You see other events, people don't get, I mean, you go to, you go to max out, there ain't no temperature checks, there ain't none of that. You come in with your mask, or you're not, ARP ain't worried if you get COVID, it ain't on him. Bullpen event, the same thing, they're not doing no temperature checks, they're not passing out no mask. You can get in with a mask, you can get in without a mask. Obviously, Atlanta is wide open. So these leagues aren't really caring. But they're separate entities. URL 
has to move differently because Fox isn't letting them. If you think for one minute that URL would not love to go right down to Houston and do Gnome, you're fooling yourself. Of course they will want to do that. What they know is that caffeine will not allow them to do that. So when I be looking at these interviews, it'd be interesting to me because Smack be like, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying, Sean? It's like no disrespect to the other leagues, but you know what I'm saying? We just got to move differently. We just got to move differently. And it'd be comical to me because I know how much they want to be in a big room. And they can't. You know what I'm saying? You know, caffeine has a lot of control over there, man. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people feel like they might have sold their soul to caffeine and everything. I won't necessarily go that far. You know, you can't be on the street corner, you know, your entire business career. Sometimes you may have to partner with people. And I mean, I'm sure Smack at some point thought, you know what? I would love to grow URL to where I could become a millionaire. Then he becomes, I think he's a millionaire. So he becomes a millionaire and it's like, yo, how can I become a billionaire and provide generational wealth? And sometimes in doing that, you got to quote unquote sell out. You got to make give up part of your company or do stuff like that. A lot, a lot of people was mad when BET sold the, the company to Viacom. It was like, oh, it's a black owned television. You sell it to Viacom for $3 billion. Viacom is a white company, owns MTV and VH1 and all these other TV, TV channels. And now BET is no longer 100% black owned anymore. A lot of, but the guy who sold it became a billionaire. And you know, so it's hard to really knock it when I know that you can't always stay in that space. But URL gave up a lot of control when they when they signed on with Caffeine. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. When I talk to a lot of people over there, they're like, yo, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Like, like Caffeine is running stuff. They running stuff. Like, to the point where it's like, you're about next, you sit here. Smack, we go on in five, four, three, two, one. X, you stand here and do all these headsets. I don't know. If you guys saw a Hip Hop Is Real video that was uploaded, it was right, it was the same day that uh, Murder Mook, Calico, New Jersey Twerk, and T-Top was supposed to do a face-off. Now, if you notice, T-Top and Twerk was very quiet in a face-off. They was upset that Calico and, and Mook were late. And, you know, a lot of discrepancies over the address and where they were supposed to come and what time, a lot of communication things from when I spoke with Mook about it. But, um... There was a video Hip Hop Is Real uploaded where Mook was trying to get in with a cup that appeared to be liquor inside. And they wouldn't, caffeine, the caffeine lady with the headset on and everything, the whole, you know, they got the men in black joints with the suits on and the glasses and the headsets would not let Mook in. And of course, Mook is going off like, yo, it's just a face off. I don't understand. Every time the face off I had, you know, I was able to bring liquor in and, and chill out and relax. But caffeine wasn't hearing it. You know what I'm saying? Smack comes outside and he basically doesn't even really get involved. But Hip Hop Is Real is recording it. For everybody that thinks Hip Hop Is Real is like compromised, I don't feel like they compromise. You see the shit they putting out on P? Like they trying to destroy this nigga. You know what I'm saying? A lot of stuff is what P has done to himself at the end of the day. But uh, they're not caring about P's feelings. You know what I'm saying? They put this out. I'm pretty sure URL told them to take it down. And I don't think taking down a video makes you compromise. You still want to respect people. So you're at the end of the day. So if you feel strongly about a video, then I may I may consider taking it down. But um, that video isn't up anymore. And it was a, a, a interchange between Mook and the caffeine person. It's not up anymore. But I was thinking, damn, I should have downloaded. But you could see already issues. You know what I'm saying? From people that actually battled at caffeine, they were telling me they're not even letting smack even drink during the during the, the broadcast and like have alcohol and stuff in his hand. They was like that was never smack. Smack used to walk out at Webster Hall and and uh you know stage forty eight and all these other other places with alcohol. Like he didn't even care. But now they're like, oh your your words are slurring. You got team homie sway swivel sway swivel during the broadcast. Like we don't really need you to have liquor and all that kind of stuff. And caffeine is really running stuff over there, man. Then when you take into account, all the ballers are basically tied to caffeine too. Everybody got a deal over there, bro. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm on Instagram recently and I just see Av is about to start a show. Chilla Jones just started a show. Casey J got a show. Official got a show. Jazz and Surf got a show. Surf got a whole nother show. Uh, who else got a show over there? Um, it just seemed like everybody, instead of starting YouTube channels, like I don't even think Av got... And then we even got a YouTube channel. It's like, oh, we got a caffeine show. 
Now, granted, you can take the show to YouTube and, you know, make money twice. But it's like that's what's being promoted almost more than anything else. And when you tie all that, if caffeine is going to give you for, I don't know, 20 hours a month, if they're going to give you a $2,000 check to film on caffeine, now that these battlers are doing it. So they're even everything, not only just URL, but all the URL battlers are also tied to caffeine. Bro, you know what's crazy? And I'm not saying this will ever happen, but caffeine is so tied to the ballots, they almost could just cut URL out. Just think about that. They they literally could just say, you know what? We already know Mook. We know Av. We know everybody that's battled on uh, on uh, caffeine. We didn't gave them deals. We have more money than you. We really can start our own battle league, cut y'all niggas out, and now y'all niggas can just battle on caffeine. I don't think that'll happen because Smack is still Smack. He still has his ear to the streets and people still respect him. And you still got to have a respectable person. You just can't put anybody in, for, in as a head of battle rap. But what is a, I mean, it would not be impossible for Caffeine to say, you know what, we're going to do Caffeine Battle League and cut everybody out. We got the most money and we already have the relationships with all the battlers. So we'll just have them continue to battle on Caffeine and we don't have, have anything to do with URL. I don't think that'll happen. That's not no rumor or anything. So don't be talking about, oh, Chris said this. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that sometimes when you put too much into a company and rely on them too much, they almost can do without you. And, and business is very cut, cutthroat. So, I mean, that's something URL should also pay attention to when they when they URL deal is up with caffeine because, you know, depending on what direction they go, URL, I mean, caffeine is starting to build these relationships with battlers as well. But that's a little bit off topic. Let me let me get back to this crowd. So URL isn't able to do the crowds, man. When I was at Bullpen, I was talking to JB. Shout out to JB, but he's black market media. He does a lot of filming. He works with P. He does a lot of the smaller events, the rooftop series and all this other kind of stuff. Born Legacies and Survivor Series. He films the smaller non-caffeine stuff. When he was at Bullpen, he was like, yo... You know, pleasure to meet you, all this kind of stuff. We talking, and he's just like, yo, I, I'm, t I'm telling Beasley, like, we got to get back to the big crowds. We got to get back to the big crowds. And I probably know that he's giving an update, if not taking screenshots of the crowd, sending it to Beasley, like, yo, this is what his crowd is looking like just for Ace Amin and John John. Imagine if it was a gnome or something. And I'm pretty sure URL is keeping tabs on even Max out and, and the crowds and, and the backlash and everything that's going on with the max out situation and they want to be in that situation as well to a big crowd except caffeine won't let them and it's just interesting to me when i be listening to these interviews because i mean you can't tell me bro because i didn't see crowds at, at, if you go back to like danny myers versus easy to block captain there's a crowd around them cheering their bars on these people those people aren't covid tested you know what i'm saying they're just there so URL isn't so much, you know, this safety, safety, safety. They're forced to be because of the shareholders, the political um, ties and everything that Fox, a much bigger company, has. Fox can't appear to be reckless and put a thousand people in a room and all that and have their name behind that. They necessarily can't do that. So they have to appear that they're doing all the steps in a COVID situation. And URL just has to deal with it because... Uh, Caffeine is giving up all the bread. If they're giving up all the bread, they got to deal with it. So you might say, well, why don't URL just do known without caffeine? And they could. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure they make enough money on the app to do known without caffeine, except they probably signed a contract to do gnomes and stuff on caffeine. But not only that, though, we know how ballers are, bro. Once you pay a baller $20,000, $30,000 and most of it is caffeine money, they don't want to take less money on a non-caffeine type of card. Like, yo, we're not doing this on caffeine. We're doing everything ourselves. We're putting up all the money. We're going to do pay-per-view. We're dropping on YouTube or we're dropping on app. They, you know, these ballers still don't want that twenty and $30,000. Even the females in battle rap are getting less than $10,000, but very, very good money, six and seven and $8,000. Like, you was never getting that kind of money with Queen of the Ring, brother. The, the, the league wasn't big enough to provide those kind of that kind of money. So now it's like, you know, unless you're going to still pay these ballots the same thing, you got to deal with caffeine or you got to still still be a part of caffeine. Which brings me to the next question is, 
Do y'all even want? Do y'all even want the crowd, bro? Do y'all want the crowd? Do y'all want caffeine? Do y'all want small rooms or whatever? I feel like gnomes and summer madnesses does do need a crowd and double impact. And anything else, man? I'm cool. Volumes. I'm cool with all that being one-offs, born legacies, all that kind of stuff. I'm cool with it being in a, in a small room. Um, that's where I stand on it, and I feel like the crowds are worse, bro. They are really worse in battle rap. Like I literally thought that. That uh, you know, I went to I went to the Cassian Hitman joint and I was everybody got booed, bruh. Hitman, boo, Cassidy, boo, uh, um, show off, boo. I mean, I know he had the pulverized bar, but he still got booed. Jag got booed. A War got a little bit of heckles. Clone a little bit of heckles. You know what I'm saying? Like this is like this. At first, I was like, "Is this just a Cassidy crowd? Like, this is, is this just an entertainment industry kind of crowd that's that doesn't respect battle rap?" But I couldn't really say that either. I could not say that either, bro, because I had went to bullpen before then. Ace of Mean, boo, Snake Eyes, boo. I'm watching these guys get booed, and I'm just like, it's almost like battle rapping became like a hangout, like a who's who. Like, yo, let me just throw on like a new fit. Let me throw on a new Chris hat. Let me, you know, do all the little fly shit. Let me get get my get my trimmed everything. You know what I'm saying? Get my shades, all that. And let me come out to a battle rap event and let me just stunt and just be around. Even though it's 90% niggas. Niggas still stunting for niggas. That, that what niggas, that's how lame niggas are. Niggas literally be stunting for niggas at the end of the day. And I feel like that's what battle rappers came. It's a lot of people that feel like I pay my money. I can do what I want to do. You spit a whack bar, I can boo. You spit a this, I can chant. I can do do whatever I want to do. Why would I duck fades? No, let them. I'm going to get paid anyway. No better. Bro, battle rap ain't no customer is always right type thing, man. It ain't no thing you pay your money, you can do whatever. Like, I ain't with all that. I ain't with all that at all. When I went to Max Out, bro, I could not believe that they actually had signs made. Somebody came in with a book bag full of signs. And one side of the sign had uh, trash and the other sign had fire. And it depended on what you did, whether the bar was dope or not, that's what sign they weighed. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not playing, bro. This is the trash sign right here. And this is the fire. Trash, fire. They had those signs printed up. They was on, you know how like when you used to go to church back in the day and your, your grandmother be fanning and she had like a little wooden stick and it had like a little oval thing or something on it and she'd be fanning. That's basically what he what the, what the dude had. And he's passing them out. I remember someone asked me like, yo, how can I get a fan? I was like, yo, my nigga, old boy got one. So he's passing them out and all you saw was this. People waving fans, and I'm talking to A Ward, and A Ward's like, yo, I'm not gonna lie, bro. That could really mess you up. Like, imagine spitting a bar, you thinking it's fire, and they wave that the bar is trash. He was like, yo, that could really mess a battle up. I was like, I know it's crazy. And, I, and part of me was hoping that it wouldn't be a part of the event. I know, I know ARP ain't gonna throw the niggas out or stuff or whatever. I, I wouldn't have been mad if he would have confiscated the fans um, or the signs or whatever. But for a, a, a patron, which is a paying customer, to feel that entitled to even print that up means you want to be a part of the battle, bro. Like, you want to be a part of this. It ain't just cool enough to come sit and come watch. I want to be a part of the show. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to do the flashback bar of the blog, man. dudes be trying to act like this nigga ain't got no bars man you know what i'm saying y'all be hating on my nigga i mean he ain't really my nigga but he my nigga for this blog y'all still be hating on my nigga anyway y'all be hating on this dude man you know what i'm saying road clip i know i hate scrabble i got that feeling again nigga but something about that mary made me right for this ben stiller you ain't about that life you ain't about that life you ain't been where i've been chiller forget who the f you are and that's your chin, Chilla, by the way. Shout out to Math and Chilla Jones, man. I was in the building for this battle, Don't Flop, happened in Atlanta, man. Shout out to Don't Flop. Where is Don't Flop at? I don't know what's up with Don't Flop, man. Shout out to Erd. I was in the building for this, man. This is one of Math Hoffa's 
best battles in my personal opinion. But I absolutely love this battle from him. I feel like this is, you know, for him to be able to stand toe to toe with Chilla Jones at a time when he was struggling to be on URL and niggas thought he was, Chilla Jones was gonna cook him. He actually went toe to toe with Chilla Jones. Normally guys like this, Math loses to it. I'm not saying just because Chilla got a lot of bars. I'm saying because Math is known for battling people with a lot of history, coming up with a lot of personals. He took some great angles versus Chilla Jones in this in this battle, man, and had actually a very good battle. And uh, shout out to Mav, man. If you ain't watched Chilla Jones versus Mav Hoffa, go check it out. It's on YouTube right now. Now back to the blog. And let's just call it what it is, man. We actually feel too entitled. As a fan, we feel too entitled. We feel like the battle rapper got to be perfect. They can't choke. They can't stumble. Or we quick to boo. They can't, like, have a little, you know, leave without your hands moment or whatever. I mean, like, just even take that. Leave without your hands. Hitman was trying his best to remember that bar. Leave without your hands. Leave without your hands. Leave without your hands. You know, yo, don't, don't, don't do that, yo. Don't do that. Try and get niggas to be quiet in the crowd. Leave without your hands. Leave without your hands. Leave without your hands. Leave without your hands. Like, you can tell he's trying to get it back. Chill out, chill out. That's it. Chill out, yo. Come on, man. Don't start that, yo. I don't, you know, for someone that doesn't really, you know, choke like Hitman is not known to be a choker. I'm not really trying to boo. I really want him to get his stuff back. And I feel like us as fans, we feel too entitled to stuff because we didn't spend our little money. You know what I'm saying? And we feel like, oh, we didn't came here. How dare you actually don't have a third round? How dare you actually stumble? How dare you actually choke? Listen, the proctor, a nigga that monitors a student and makes sure he or she doesn't... What he did was a choke. No. How dare you actually need to pause for a minute to get some water? And I think it's, it then got too much to the point where we have taken the people that choke all the time or a good amount of time, you know, some people with like a 20 to 30% choke rate and we didn't hate it choking so much because of that, that now we even get on people that rarely choke. It's people that rarely choke in battles and it's like we still get them held too. And it's, you know, and I, I, I just don't really feel like, like it's fair at all. Like, you know, I'm in the crowd. I don't know why A Ward is getting heckled. I, why, why, tell me why Clone would be getting heckled, heckled, boy. Tell me why Clone would be getting heckled. A dude that took a battle with a week's prep because Sirius Jones couldn't make the battle. Y'all niggas got the nerve to heckle him in the crowd? That don't even make no sense to me. We, we are definitely way too entitled, man. And I think that that's a big problem. And I, I honestly feel like it's just going to get worse. A lot of y'all trying to put this shit on Atlanta, man. It's not an Atlanta thing, bro. It's definitely not an Atlanta thing. Niggas was chanting 3-0 and all that kind of stuff in New York, too. It's not an Atlanta thing. It's an entitled thing. It's a lot of new fans. It's a lot of people that don't appreciate the culture. It's a lot going on, man. You know, if people are just jumping into battle rap that ain't even really, like, real battle rap fans, that's really what's going on. I'm going to tell you right now, if you was to throw some of that, you can throw that stuff anywhere right now. This is what you're going to have to deal with because it didn't became okay to boo. It didn't became okay to boo. Like, it didn't became, like, a comical thing now. Before, it was just, like, taboo to do it. Like, you know, you may not want to do it. It didn't actually became cool to do that shit. So, it ain't just no ATL thing. You, We're going to see that in general, man. We are, gonna, we are going to see that in general. I'm going to be checking for it. I may have another blog on this when Max Out 2 happens. But when URL does move back to the big crowd, we are, you are definitely going to see that. You know, a part of me likes the, what, the likes people being able to overcome all that and turn it around. I do feel like like some of it is entertaining at the end of the day. I'm not going to say it's not, but it comes to a point where it's too much, though. It, it's definitely too much. In certain situations, if, yeah, if a person doesn't have a third round or if a person chokes, right away or something like that. I definitely understand booing or doing whatever because at the end of the day, these people are supposed to be professional battle rappers and you're supposed to come with three rounds. You're getting paid like you're supposed to come with three rounds. When you're saying stuff like, I don't care, it's whatever, throwing your middle finger up to the crowd, all that kind of stuff, I don't mind. But a lot of these people, man, if you even if you spit a whack bar, it's still effort involved in you writing. 
Like, why would I boo your effort if I know you really thought that that was a good bar and you tried to spit it and you came with three rounds? I'm not booing you over your effort. It's hard to get up there and rap in front of a crowd. It's very hard to do. And remember your material, deal with the heckling, deal with losing your, your speech and having to stop and get water and all. Like, it's a lot going on in a battle. And I appreciate these guys being able to give us three rounds. And I feel like as much as I want the crowds back, it definitely has to be some tweaks. I feel like we got to stop feeling so entitled that we can just say whatever at a battle and it's just cool because we spent our money. That's a bad way to be. We got to be more appreciative of what these guys are doing. And at the end of the day, I want to see the crowds because MC is exactly what it stands for, man. Move the crowd. You heard what Rockham said in that song. If I'm not mistaken, that's Rockham. MC means move the crowd. It's cool that Kid Chaos and Real Sick and all these Jada Knight and all these dudes can rock these small rooms. The question is, can you rock a big room? That, that's the question I want to know. Can you stand in front of thousands of people and make the crowd go crazy? I And that to me is really the ultimate MC that's, MC that's able to do both. The top tiers have been proven that they can do both. And I feel like I want to see how they are on a bigger stage. So if you ask me, do I want the crowds back? Yeah, I got to say yes. I can't just, I don't, definitely don't feel like there should be no more crowds in battle rap. So my answer is yes. But I don't think we need a crowd for every event. Maybe just, maybe just three events a year. Double Impact, Gnome, and Summer Madness. Other than that, I'm cool with URL with this caffeine stuff. I'm cool with the one-offs. I'm cool with the small rooms. I'm cool with all that stuff. Maybe we don't need big room. We don't need a large crowd for everything. But Gnomes and Summer Madness should be... It's, 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 it used to mean something that you could rock a Summer Madness crowd. And I still feel like that does mean something. When I, when I look at MCs, I need to know, can you still... Can you rock a Summer Madness that actually means something. I feel like I want to see how these guys are do. And um, so, yeah, I definitely want the crowds come back, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Subscribe to the channel. I'll let your boy.